When it comes to the issue of abortion, there is a bit of a split going on on the pro-life side of things. I am Jamie Bambrick with Clear Truth Media, and I want to talk today about abolitionism versus incrementalism and give something interesting from church history that might help us come to something of an agreement. So when it comes to abortion, you have two sides on the Christian pro-life side of things. You have abolitionists. They believe that any law that is not about full abolition of abortion and any candidate that won't completely outlaw abortion, that that should not be supported and cannot be supported in good conscience by Christians. On the other hand, you have incrementalists. Now, they would say that the end goal is the same. The end goal is the eradication of abortion entirely, but that on the journey there, there can be steps where you take a law or a candidate that will lower the number of abortions, right? Now, to be clear, I do want to be very clear because this is important. Both sides want to get rid of abortion. The end goal is agreed upon. If you're watching this video and you don't believe that, perhaps this is not the right video for you. You could maybe watch something that is more at your intellectual level, like this nice video of kittens that my 18 month old <laughs> likes to watch. Or you could do something more at your moral level, like read Mein Kampf. This is a question about tactics, not really about goals. Let me use an analogy of sumo wrestling, right? If this was sumo wrestling, the incrementalist would be happy to kick the other guy in the groin first and then drag him out of the ring. The abolitionist thinks that you have to remove him from the ring in one move and that is the only permitted move. Now, the reason for that is that they are worried that in this sumo wrestling analogy, we will do what the pro-life movement has often done, which is kick the other guy in the groin, then go off and have a cigarette break, wait for him to recover, check he's okay, before going on to lose entirely, right? So they have a point. This is, this is not the outcome that we want. Now, as ever, the enlightened centrist, slash not fully decided person, slash possibly intellectual card, I hope it's not that one, I haven't fully made up my mind. I think there's good people on both sides of this issue. But I do think that we have a very interesting historical example that is worth learning from and could perhaps bridge the gap between these two sides a little bit. It's the example of the most successful abolition movement in church history, namely the abolition of slavery in the British Empire. Unlike American abolition, it did not require the deaths of six, seven hundred thousand people to accomplish. It happened in the largest empire in the world without firing a single shot. So let's outline how that happened. And people last time seemed to enjoy my multimedia presentation. So I've prepared another one, no expense spared on this black marker and sheet of A4 printer paper. Uh, very expensive stuff and obviously very fancy. There's a whole team involved in, in designing this. Um, and let's go through the history of slavery here and how it was abolished. Now, you could technically go back earlier than this, and actually, interestingly, slavery was largely non-existent, or at least incredibly rare in most of Europe from about the 1400s onwards for a good couple of hundred years due to the influence of Christianity. Nonetheless, slavery had a bit of a resurgence and it was really at its peak in the British Empire at about the 1780s, which is itself a point of encouragement for Christians because it didn't take all that long to go from its peak to its complete abolition. So when it comes to an issue like abortion, these things can happen very quickly. Nothing is impossible with God. Anyway, there's a bunch of people involved in the abolition movement. Two thirds of them were actually clergy. They were, at the beginning of this movement, ridiculed and considered to be anti-English, but they appealed to the moral Christian consciences of people very explicitly, telling them that they needed to vote this way and support this movement because they were Christians, and they did see a moral and political turnaround in the nation. Most famous of these guys, as I'm sure you're aware, was William Wilbur force and he said that God had set before him two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and the reformation of manners. The reformation of manners being moral reform as opposed to not eating one's dessert with a soup spoon, which is, of course, deeply immoral. Anyway, 1789, he gives his first ever speech on the abolition of slavery and then every single parliamentary session from 1791 until its abolition in 1833, he proposes a bill to abolish slavery. 
So there you go, right, that's it. The aim is very clear. We're abolishing slavery, that's the law. We're advocating for it, that's what we're going to do. And he did it regularly and he campaigned on that law and he raised that law until such a time as that proposal became law, right. So, abolitionism, obviously correct. Hold on a second though, because there's some magic here. You can't see the special effects, but what is this? Oh, there's more to the story, everybody. What else happened in this story? Well, whilst you had a very clear call to abolish slavery, you also had some important steps that made the abolition of slavery possible. So in 1799, you had the Slave Trade Regulation Act. Now, the Slave Trade Regulation Act was very simple. It was simply about not overcrowding slave ships. Now, the abolitionist, and I actually agree, I agree with this point, the abolitionist would say that this is not actually a good law. Like if the law today was you can have slavery, but you can't overcrowd the slave ships, that would be a bad law. It is a bad law, but it's also a better law than what they previously had, and it did a couple of things. Number one, it gave more dignity to those who were in slavery, but number two, it also made slavery less common and less profitable. You couldn't have the same profit margins with less crowded ships. Then another, how many years later is that? Seven years later, in 1806, you have the Foreign Slave Trade Act. Now, what's the Foreign Slave Trade Act? Well, basically, the Brits and the French are natural enemies. We are, of course, enlightened and wise, and they are cheese-eating surrender monkeys. No offence to any French people watching, I'm only joking, and your cheese is actually quite tasty. I also like a good baguette from time to time. Nonetheless, they were at war during this time period, but the bulk of slaves were sent to French colonies. And British slavers were doing this, but they weren't able to do so under the British flag. So what they would do is very simply fly under the American flag and bring their slaves over to French colonies in the Caribbean or wherever else it might be. Now, the Foreign Slave Trade Act did something very simple. What it did was it said that British subjects could not engage in transporting slaves to the French. They couldn't aid and abet the French colony in a time of war. This step is described in, what's the name of that movie with William Wilberforce? It's very good, I'll put it up on screen. They describe it as cheating, they're cheating. They make a law that is nothing to do with slavery really. The whole point of it was about the war effort to, very importantly, defeat the French. The French must lose. Again. Ha, 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 ha. Now, once again, this is not a good law. Like, it's not a good thing to have slaves. If we had that law today, said, well, you can have slaves, you can transport slaves, you can sell slaves, you just can't do so with France. People would be like, well, of course we can't do so with France, but still, the slavery part is bad. However, what this led to was in 1807 that the slave trade had been so diminished by perhaps as much as 80%, that the slave trade, one year later, was abolished, that there was no more slave trade. Now, you might think, well, this is great, but even this is an incremental step. This is not the abolition of the existence of slavery. Those who had slaves could continue to have them, but the trade of slaves was abolished in the British Empire. And even at that point, it still took a further 26 years for slavery itself to be completely abolished. That is the full journey of the abolition of slavery. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what did we learn from all of this? Well, a couple of things, right? Firstly, actually, that this was a Christian movement and it wasn't just a moral revival fueled by Christianity, although it very much included that. It was also Christians applying their beliefs to the political sphere, so that's number one. Number two is that the abolitionists were very clear that their aim was abolition, and they weren't going to settle for less than that, they weren't going to stop until that happened. But thirdly, 
They were also going to take every single win they could get along the way and however they could get to that abolition, they were willing to do so. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I personally think that was great and I have probably solved one of the great conundrums of our time and there is going to be some beautiful moment of unity with hugging rainbows, butterflies and uh, babies being born actually will in fact happen because slavery will end and that's what we all want. If you liked that video, and let's be honest, why wouldn't you? Well, please just gently press the like button. Never smash the like button. It's unwise and unnecessary. You can also like, subscribe, comment, do all the things for the benefit of the algo. If you'd like to support the channel, you can go to wearecontramundum.com, pick up a t-shirt or a hoodie or whatever you like from there. And if you'd like to check out more of our work, please go to Clear Truth on Facebook, Twitter or YouTube. We will be posting more and more there as time goes on. We're still getting started, but all very exciting. And speaking of the aforementioned algo, it would like you to watch this following video.